All right, welcome back to another video. My name is Ian Major. I'm an entrepreneur, Bitcoin pleb, and all around raging capitalist. And in today's video, uh, on the excitement scale, I am on an 11. Uh, and that is because we are kicking off a series on running your own Bitcoin node. Um, I've done a video in the past on how the Bitcoin system works at a high level. What are sort of the key components and entities that enable the system to operate, uh, of which a node is an absolutely critical component. And so I'll link that in the description down below, which is probably the better starting point if you're very new to Bitcoin. Um, but in today's video, I'm going to be specifically speaking to why would someone want to run their own node. Um, so we'll be talking about uh, just recapping like what is a node, what are the functions that it performs within the Bitcoin uh, ecosystem, and then we'll talk through the benefits of running a node for yourself, and we'll tee up some of the different ways that you can do so uh, and, and sort of get started. Um, in future videos on this series, I'll be doing you know deeper tutorials, uh, going deeper into sort of what's required from a materials perspective, software, hardware, uh, as well as um, some step-by-step -step tutorials uh, further in the future. So buckle up. This is going to be an exciting one. And this is a really, really, really important part uh, of the sort of Bitcoin education journey. So I'm excited to have you here. For those returning to the channel, welcome back, my friends. As always, it is great to have you. And for those new to the channel, welcome to you as well. I know many of you are not subscribed, so I would invite you to consider uh, subscribing if you enjoy this content. Um, that really does uh, help you because we're going to be doing a lot of exciting stuff in the coming weeks and months, and it helps get these messages out to a broader uh, group of folks on their quest to become financially sovereign, which is what this channel is all about. So without further ado, let's jump into uh, what is a node and why would someone want to run one? All right, so let's jump into it. Um, first, shout out to Evan Kaloudis, uh, Armin the Parman, um, Bitcoiner.guide, uh, and, and many, many others uh, for uh, some of the folks that I've kind of drawn inspiration from and knowledge over time. Uh, shout out to all that you do. I'm going to link uh, some of these resources in the description down below uh, so you can be sure to check those out as well. But let's start first and foremost with what is a node? A node is nothing more than a computer running the Bitcoin Core software. Um, and so this could literally be your you know, computer that you're using uh, for work or for you know, uh, personal life, whatever. Um, and it can also, as we'll discuss later on, come in a more sort of... Uh, um, you know, sp specific uh, frame for, uh, you know, specifically running kind of this task. Um, but it's a computer running the Bitcoin software and it performs a number of key functions for the Bitcoin system. Uh, ultimately, it is all about the node operators. So nodes are what uh, propagate information across the Bitcoin network. So, you know, if you're running a node, uh, that node is connected to other nodes on the network. And so let's say that I want to send some Bitcoin to a friend. Uh, what happens is that I have to first propagate that transaction um, to ensure that the, the network has sort of um, uh, has acknowledged it. And so the way that I propagate that transaction to the network is through a node. A node sort of looks at that transaction, inspects it based on the rules that it's running based on the Bitcoin core software that it's, uh, that it's uh, running. And it says, okay, does this meet you know, certain requirements? Uh, is it a valid transaction? If yes, it sort of propagates that further. The next node picks it up and so on and so forth. And when a node inspects that transaction and deems it valid, that goes into that node's uh, mempool or memory pool. Um, again, I've done a whole video on the mempool as well, but essentially that is sort of where a transaction sits before a miner picks it up and packages it into a block that goes onto the blockchain. And after a certain amount of confirmations, i.e. you know, additional blocks burying that transaction that I just made uh, further into the blockchain, 
you know, ultimately we can then say that that is settled with, uh, with more finality than you can imagine. So that's at a very, very high level, uh, the, the sort of key function that a node, um, uh, you know, that a node is sort of there to do. Um, it's propagating and broadcasting transactions. Uh, it's verifying and validating uh, not just individual transactions when it sees them, but also the blocks that miners are packaging. So a miner will package up this block and say, hello, I have solved the proof of work uh, sort of puzzle and I am uh, uh, proposing this block with these component transactions inside to be attached to the blockchain. And so nodes are again kind of validating and verifying them. Um, so a super, super crucial uh, kind of role. Now let's talk about what happens today if you're not using a node and that will get us into some of the benefits of running a Bitcoin node for yourself. Um, today, in most cases, if you're not running your own node, uh, you are trusting, well, not in most cases, in all cases, you are trusting someone else to um, convey and propagate information accurately on your behalf. Um, so for example, let's say you store your Bitcoin on an exchange. God forbid, please don't do that if you're doing that. Um, but you know, let's say you have your Bitcoin on an exchange and you want to send it to someone else. When you initiate that transaction through the exchange, you're using the exchange's node to broadcast that transaction to the Bitcoin network, right? Um, further than that, you are trusting the exchange even to tell you how much funds you have. Um, you know, your fund is not just like sitting in this little account in an exchange. Uh, it's sitting out there on the blockchain in the form of an unspent transaction output or, you know, UTXO. Um, and so even just to query, like how many funds do I have or how much funds do I have? Um, a third party is, is pinging nodes to scan the blockchain and report back on how much uh, sort of funds you know you you have attached to that wallet, so you're trusting someone else to do those different uh, functions, and so let's talk now about like what are the benefits of you know running your own node. Uh, it comes in a few key flavors. The first and perhaps most obvious, based on the description I just noted, is censorship resistant, right? Um, you know the whole mantra of don't trust, verify is extremely, extremely important. Um, you know, and so think about censorship resistance. And in fact, we've already seen some of this. Uh, you have exchanges that have um, followed up with users who appear to have deposited um, Bitcoin funds that have been mixed in a coin mixing um, tool like Whirlpool or Wasabi. Again, not gonna talk about those uh, details in this, in this video, but um, you know, just simply because my Bitcoin has, uh, or, or for example, you know, maybe I have some Bitcoin that at one point years ago was used in some sort of illicit transaction, illicit defined by whomever arbitrarily. Um, and because of that, if I'm trying to use those funds with an exchange or with another third party, um, that third party, if I'm using their node, can, you know, block it, right? Um, and we're not seeing a lot of that taking place, but as uh, Bitcoin continues to grow, as you know, government eyes become uh, more uh, around it, you know, you can bet that there's going to be more of this activity. So Bitcoin's promise to individuals that you don't need permission to use this financial system is compromised if we're trusting other third parties um, to sort of run a node on our behalf. So censorship resistance is really important. Um, that also flows through into privacy. So what happens when you're communicating with a node is that things like your IP address are being shared, um, which, you know, when used with other information, such as the type of wallet that you're using, um, you know, linking that with perhaps any personally identifiable information from you that can be connected to like an exchange and buying on a KYC exchange, so all of this is not very good. Imagine, um, you know, a situation where 
uh, depending on whatever wallet is being used, um, depending on their sort of setup in terms of nodes, like they could be pinging a public node that is controlled by some chain surveillance firm, right? And so now your IP address is being shared, which can be used to, to track and identify you. And so it just gives more information for, um, you know, would-be surveillers to kind of connect the dots on, on your activity. Um, not good, right? So the next one is around uh, decentralization and resiliency of the network. Um, you know, keep in mind that as long as there's a copy of the Bitcoin blockchain, um, Bitcoin will persist and continue to operate. And so you would literally need, you know, all nodes to be shut down forever for, you know, Bitcoin to, to sort of die. And so by adding a node into the network, you are increasing the density of that network and increasing the likelihood that it's just going to continue operating for forever and ever. Um, and so that's very good. It's good for the network, but it also benefits you personally as a hodler. Uh, it makes the network more resilient and difficult to kill. Um, the other benefit that it also gives you is it gives you more of a say into the ecosystem. And so for folks who were around back in 2017, when you had the, the block size wars, right? You know, one camp within uh, the Bitcoin community that thought we need to increase the block size so that we can push more transactions through the system. Whereas... Uh, Others in the Bitcoin community said no, because that will uh, hamper the decentralization of the network because if that were to occur, then someone would have to beef up their equipment that they're using to run their node. Um, and there'd be a fear that maybe the average individual couldn't do that. Today, as we'll talk about in just a moment, anyone can kind of run this with a couple hundred uh, bucks. I'm not saying that's accessible for absolutely everyone on earth. Um, but it's a far it's far more accessible than um, if we were to kind of increase the the block size, and so if you were not running your own node at that time, you were essentially having someone else vote on your behalf. Maybe vote is not the way to say it, but you running a node allows you to run the rules of Bitcoin that you want to run, um, and so you would be able to just run or, or keep with the rules that say, no, you know, the block size is not going to exceed one megabyte, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so uh, having a say is is a form of, of power that you gain by, um, uh, or having a choice rather, you know, let's say that you were using um, some service and, you know, they had upgraded to what would become the Bitcoin cash fork and now all of a sudden, you know, you're using their service, not really knowing or recognizing that um, that you have Bitcoin Cash now and not uh, and not sort of Bitcoin. Um, and the last one, and again, this is a lot of this that Armin, uh, the Parman, kind of lays out in the uh, in the site that I'll, I'll sort of link, um, is this process really does give you a deeper appreciation of Bitcoin, of how it works. Uh, and so for that reason alone, I think it's uh, at the very least a fascinating kind of project to undertake. Um, and, you know, if you have more appreciation and depth of understanding into a subject, you're probably going to have more conviction for uh, for it. So you're probably going to end up buying more and your descendants will thank you for that. Um, so that's just a quick kind of tour of the benefits. I hope this makes sense uh, in terms of like what's where do I start? Uh, there's this very helpful page on Bitcoiner.guide. Uh, it goes into some of the key categories of Bitcoin nodes. And so as you can see here, there's uh, there's Bitcoin Core, right? Like you could just literally download and run this on any computer. Um, you know, that is, I think, less, probably less uh, um, visually appealing and easy than one of the next categories, this plug and play. And so these are kind of pre-built like actual boxes, if you look behind me, uh, that little white box um, uh, that you can see on the top shelf, that is a kind of pre-built um, um, kind of my node. 
Uh, and then there's also sort of do-it-yourself do options uh, across a variety of different software and hardware combinations. And so the first kind of piece is like, well, where do I start? Gosh, I really do think Evan has a nice um, summary here in the following tweet of, you know, need help choosing a platform. And then he lists out, you know, this one is best for this. This one is best for this. They all have trade-offs, right? And so, um, you know, these are some good resources I would encourage you to check out and have a think through. Um, and again, in future videos, I'm going to cover the, uh, you know, some of these solutions in a lot more detail, including step-by-step -step tutorials, uh, as well as like, what are the general components um, that, you know, uh, are common across some of these different platforms. Um, but really wanted to just tee up, you know, what is a node? Why is it worth, um, you know, considering to run one? And so now let's go ahead and wrap this video up. All right, so there you have it. Again, my intention with this video wasn't to do a sort of exhaustive guide on how to run a node. That will take multiple videos. But what I hope I accomplished is if you are unfamiliar as to what a node is and its role within the Bitcoin system and ecosystem, um, hopefully you now have that understanding. Again, it sort of propagates and broadcasts information across the network um, and also is what allows you to gather information about your funds um, because it's the node that is connected to the blockchain itself. Uh, we then talked about some of the key benefits uh, in terms of censorship resistance, right? If you're not using your own node, you're trusting someone else, um, you know, simple as that. And so a node really is the sort of, um, you know, key puzzle piece that allow that would allow many to operate Bitcoin in a fully uh, trustless or at least trust minimized uh, sort of sense. We talked about the privacy elements that I don't think get talked about enough, right? Your IP address is being shared um, whenever you're uh, you know communicating with a node, um, and there's definitely going to be malicious nodes out there, right? Uh, and and nodes run by surveillance firms. Um, that you would just not want to share information with. Uh, we talked about the you know, benefits to the system of improving its resiliency and decentralization because ultimately node operators are what matters. A lot of people say the miners have all the power. Uh, and while that's certainly true on some dimensions, uh, we saw that play out in the 2017 uh, block size wars where you had a number of major mining pools that were in support of increasing the block size. Um, however, you had uh, sort of stalwart, you know, Bitcoiners who uh, who voted no and they voted with their nodes. Um, and then lastly, we talked about how this whole uh, exercise really will give you a much better appreciation for Bitcoin. Uh, and, and it can be a, a fun project at that. So we'll go ahead and leave this video here. Again, this was just an introduction to this series uh, and hopefully motivator as to why this is important and why this can benefit you as a financially sovereign individual. Um, so I hope you found this content useful and valuable. If you did, you already know what to do. Give this video a like, comment down below with your thoughts, questions, uh, any kind of themes or topics you'd like to see covered in future videos. Uh, but until then, we'll go ahead and leave this video here for now. As always, every sat counts. And until next time, we'll see you then.